Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Ali Fiam. I'm the editor of Power Retail, and welcome to the Amasis and City Beach webinar, Unleashing Untapped Potential Through AI. It's lovely to have you all here, and I hope you're all enjoying, you know, quarantine, staying at home. Very shortly, I will introduce our speakers, uh, but before I do, I do have some quick housekeeping. So I suggest you keep your phones on silent. You've got a lot of really interesting and meaningful insights happening today, so you don't want to miss out on any of those. And we do have a, um, a lot of things to go through. So if you have any questions for our presenters today, please type them into the little question section of the pop-up on your right. We'll do our best to answer as many as we can by the end of the session. But if you do have some that don't get answered, feel free to contact the presenters after the webinar. So today we have Kristen Wallace, the client success team lead, who has been with the Masters for over two years now. I'd also like to introduce Lara Donnelly, the CRM manager, who has been with City Beach for over, uh, for over two years. And it's a pleasure to have you both here with me today. So I would like to ask the two speakers what their top goal for the attendees is um, today. So firstly, Kristen. I would like uh, everyone to, to walk away knowing something that they didn't know before they joined us today. Fantastic. And Lara? Um, well, yeah, I suppose I second what, uh, what Kristen has said, but um, I suppose I just want to um, just show everyone that AI isn't uh, as hard or scary as you know many may think. Um, and you know when we go through the presentation, um, you'll see where we were before and where we are now. So if we can achieve it, achieve it, um, anyone can. So yeah, wonderful. I love that mentality. So before we begin, I will give everyone a brief run through of today's webinar agenda. To start, we'll provide a brief introduction of who Amasis is. And from there, we head into the main event. So Lara's presentation on City Beach, unleashing untapped potential through AI. This is then followed by the Amasis platform AI with a summary and next steps. Then we will top off today's webinar with questions at the end, as mentioned before. Also, please make sure you stick around to the end because we have a sensational City Beach code that is only offered to the attendees that are joining this webinar, which is very exciting. And it's an extremely great offer. So without further ado, I will pass things over to Kristen, who will introduce who Amasis is. Over to you, Kristen. Thank you, Ali. Um, yeah, so just to briefly introduce you all to Amasis, for those of you who aren't familiar with what we do. Um, we are the only omni-channel customer engagement platform built to accelerate business outcomes. So how do we do that? We have inbuilt industry-specific analytics and use cases within our platform using channel agnostic personalization and a fully integrated CDP, along with actionable AI to scale one-to-one -one personalization for optimal results. We house over 4.2 billion customer records. That's like half the population of Earth. We facilitate 350 million daily personalized interactions, and we send an average of 6.2 billion messages per month. So what do we do well? Retail, some of you have heard this before, we do retail really well. So what does that mean? Connected commerce, what do we know about retail shopper behavior? We know that 86% of shoppers are channel hopping across at least two channels. And we know that 39% of consumers are very unlikely to visit a retail location if the online store doesn't provide some inventory information. On top of that, and you know, something that we should all be aware of is that 30% higher customer lifetime values are seen when retailers are using omni-channel strategies. Which leads me to my friend, Lara. So, I met Lara two and a half years ago, formally, uh, when Amarsa started working with City Beach, and so did she. Uh, Lara is probably one of the most conscientious and detail-oriented people that I have ever had the pleasure of working with. Um, so as a result, she's doing some really amazing things with an amazing team of people. So shout out to that team, Mike, Emmerich, Jenna, and George, amazing people over there. Um, so we've all developed a bit of a friendship. Uh, we always catch up for dinner uh, in Brisbane when I'm there. Uh, I love going to see them and I love working with them. 
Also, fun fact, Laura and I worked together um, in a previous life with other employers. She was still on um, client side and I was still on, on vendor side. So I guess we were kind of destined to be together. Um, Laura, <laughs> yeah, that was funny when we, uh, when we found out. <laughs> yeah, definitely. We were <laughs> like, I think I recognize your name. Did you have been emailing me about a year ago? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Um, well, thank you, Kristen. Um, so I suppose I'll um, introduce myself. Um, my name's Lara Donnelly. Um, so I began um, my career in marketing over seven years ago um, as a marketing assistant for a childcare company in Brisbane. Um, since then, I've worked for uh, one of the biggest retailers here in Australia in their CRM team. Um, which was where I first developed uh, my passion for not only email marketing, um, but you know, customer data and using that data to create you know, better experiences for our customers. Um, but however, when I, um, when I saw that City Beach was looking for um, someone to lead their email channel, you know, I got really excited, um, not only uh, because I had found this uh, you know, this newfound passion for email marketing. Um, but because City Beach is one of those brands that I feel like uh, we all grew up with, um, you know, it was the place we would beg our parents to buy our stuff from and, you know, where all the cool kids would hang out at. So uh, when I found out I got the role, uh, I was really happy. And um, I think I was having a, a streak of good luck um, because that same week uh, I also bought my first home and I also got engaged. So, um, it was a very exciting time for me, um, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. um, so, um, enough about me. Um, so, for anyone who um, doesn't know, um, City Beach is one of the biggest uh, fast fashion retailers here in Australia um, and has been around since 1985. Um, we stock over 200 brands across surf skate and street clothing, footwear and accessories. Um, and we have 70 store locations across Australia, um, as well as our e-commerce site. Um, so yeah, we've gone from, you know, one store here in Brisbane um, to, you know, one of the biggest fashion retailers here in Australia. Yeah, um, so, so huge. Actually, I don't think, I, I think maybe some people or some Australians don't actually know how how massive uh city beach really is in in fast fashion and and with your demographic um really really huge so um we've achieved together some really amazing results and i think even within the first year uh just using our customer intelligence marketing solutions without the addition of our new ai product um we did some amazing things so we spent a lot of time planning big automations and life cycle campaigns. And the results were amazing. Uh, Lara, how much time do we, do you think we spent together in those first few months making that happen? <laughs> um, God, it felt like literally every hour of every day. Um, yeah, I remember emailing and texting Kristen um, daily uh, with, you know, constant questions and screenshots of the automations and the campaigns. Um, it feels like a lifetime ago now. Um, so I suppose when I first came on board with City Beach and, you know, before we completed our onboarding journey with the masters, um, you know, the email channel was really struggling. Um, you know, we were sending email campaigns to customers that were inactive and disengaged. Uh, we couldn't track, you know, our customers in store behavior. So we had no visibil uh, visibility of our in-store shopper. Um, and uh, although we were capturing, capturing, you know, customers' online purchases, um, you know, we didn't have the technology to process that data or get any insights to be able to do, you know, anything meaningful with it. Um, you know, so before we could even think of launching any automations or campaigns, um, we really focused on cleaning up and organising uh, the data that we did have on our customers. Um, and then from there, we could start building the unified profiles for each customer um, and then leverage uh, a master's web extend and predict to, um, you know, start 
enriching those unified profiles um, with some really valuable and uh, actionable information. Um, so yeah, for the first time at City Beach, uh, we were able to see what our customers were buying um, and, and also react uh, to that behavior um, you know, through the automations and the life cycle uh, campaigns. Um, and as you can see um, on the slide, uh, we saw some really amazing results across our email channel. Um, so, you know, we saw a 105% increase in email revenue. Um, we saw a 38% increase in active customers with a 36% retention rate. Um, we saw $242 increase in lifetime spend um, and our return on investment spend ran at um, 14x on Facebook and 11 on Google. Um, so yeah, uh, as Kristen uh, said, you know, we saw some really amazing results. <laughs> Look at this. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is the monster. <laughs> um, so I suppose, uh, you know, obviously before, you know, Amas has released, you know, their game changing tactics and their AI solutions, uh, I was actually building all our automations from scratch. Um, so the one you see on the screen um, is actually just half the program because we literally could not fit the rest of it on the slide. Um, <laughs> uh, so this one here um, is actually was our defecting buyer program and, uh, you know, this this program actually took months uh, to put together. Um, but, you know, we saw the opportunity with this life cycle stage. So we wanted to make sure we were communicating to them, you know, in a timely manner and provide content that seemed, you know, relevant to them. Um, plus on top of that, you know, we wanted to utilize all the channels that were, you know, available, you know, to us um, that maybe weren't before. Um, so we could actually deliver that you know omni-channel experience um, and you know what it all paid off uh, in the end um, as we just saw with you know the results um, on the previous slide um, however um, as the months passed uh, we did start to notice uh, you know some flaws that came you know with this particular approach um, you know this journey uh, in particular, for example, you know, we were targeting customers who hadn't shopped in, say, you know, 90 days. And, you know, in between that time, that customer's already come to the website. Um, you know, they've browsed a bunch of products. You know, they've opened and clicked our emails. They've displayed some kind of intent to actually make a purchase. Um, but we were, you know, kind of sitting there just waiting for them to roll over to their 90-day, you know, not purchased mark. Um, and, you know, by that time, it's most likely too late and it's actually a lot harder to win them back. Yeah. So I think part of this as well is because you're so pedantic <laughs> and detail oriented, <laughs> you, you, you wanted to automate every single day of the, of the defecting, um, of the defecting period. So, you know, um, that, that might be like 200 days for some people. So Lara wanted to make sure she was managing every single day within that, um, 200 day period manually. Um, which, which is amazing, but also a lot of work. So it was definitely a massive undertaking, um, but worth the effort. I mean, an increase of $242 in active customer lifetime value and 105% increase in email revenue year on year is a huge, huge result. Um, so now we're collecting all of this great behavioral data off the back of the work that Lara and team are doing. We're nailing the customer life cycle, obviously, and um, we're, we're implementing omni-channel campaigns. Um, but we have now so many areas that we can focus on and make improvements after having done this work, which leads us to Biggie. <laughs> so many more problems, Lara. Uh, Biggie. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I suppose we eventually realized uh, we had, you know, a more money, more problems, you know, kind of situation on our hands. Um, 
thanks to thanks to Biddy here. Um, so I actually ended up, as Kristen said, uh, spending majority of my time, um, you know, trying to find the right person and the right segments uh, to send to, um, and you know, just trying to figure out how we could be more proactive um, instead of waiting, you know, for the customer to eventually purchase something or not purchase anything um and then reacting to it after the fact um so you know i'd be in the platform every day um and i could see that a defecting or an active customer had recently recently been browsing a website um and was looking at some really like high value items um but hadn't come back or you know made a purchase um and it was really frustrating because i knew we had all this great data on each customer um, but it was just becoming too time consuming, um, you know, trying to analyze the data and, you know, trying to build segments with layers and layers of criteria, um, you know, it just became impossible to maintain and to actually scale. Um, and, uh, I suppose that's when AI came to the rescue and guided us to the light. <laughs> And here's what the light looks like. Much better. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, C City Beach uh, went to Etel West last year. They, you know, they work for a great company where they get to travel and learn lots of great things at different conferences. So they were at Etel West and they came back obsessed with the idea of a CDP. So <laughs> it's a buzzword. It's a buzz acronym, right? So what is a CDP? Um, and my question to the team was, how do you want to use your CDP and where do you see value? Because Immersis is intrinsically a CDP. We are, you know, but the most important thing uh, to think about is what you want out of your CDP and, uh, or as the case may be, what you want to put into it. Um, so we started talking about Immersis CDP uh, City Beach's unique customer data and how to house it and use it to save time, money, and resource. Um, so we decided that CDP, combined with our retail analytics and tactics, uh, with our AI layer, is the way forward. Um, so what this allows us to do is to take a more scalable approach to City Beach's marketing business and their customers, uh, which really allows for one-to-one -one interactions with each customer at the right time in the right channel. So now, uh, instead of analyzing every single touch point that we can reach a contact at based on what they did last, uh, we can automate that with propensity modeling behind the AI to reach people before they do anything with all of that amazing customer data or data as, as uh, Laura says, feeding it. <laughs> data. Uh, yeah, no, look, very, very <laughs> data. Um, yeah, no, look, very, very true. Um, and it was very exciting for us. Um, but, you know, another major factor that AI actually, uh, you know, helped us with um, or helped us do uh, was create, you know, efficiencies within our team. Um, you know, it freed up, you know, all that time spent analyzing and creating those segments based on, you know, a million different unique criteria. Um, and you know something that had originally taken us months uh, to produce was actually now achievable in a matter of days. So yeah, that was a bit of a game changer. Actually, a huge game changer for us. Cool. Yeah. So I guess what we'll do now is just break it down into the three components of uh, the solution that make up what we've done together. So uh, the first bit is a unified customer profile. Um, yeah, so, you know, as I mentioned at the start, uh, you know, we had, you know, bits of data all over the place um, before we, um, you know, onboarded with a masters. Um, and we really struggled to, you know, do anything meaningful with it. Um, so the first solution um, was, consolidating all that customer data um, so that we could finally have a single view of our customer in one place, one platform, 
um, so that we could, you know, finally grow and uh, scale personalization across all the channels that were available to us. The second bit, and I think both of our favorites, is identification of customers in store. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, this second one is definitely, yeah, actually really exciting for us. And yeah, one of my, um, one of my favorite solutions. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, you know, we've never, and I mean, never been able to identify our customers in store. Um, we had, you know, these restrictions with our POS systems and, you know, we couldn't even collect email addresses in store. And this was something that was really, you know, um, important to us and it really felt like a really uh, missed opportunity. Um, so, you know, we worked together with the masters um, to develop a solution using a barcode. Um, so where each customer would be allocated their own unique code um, and then they could go and scan that barcode in store when making their purchase. Um, so since that barcode uh, was now attached to their purchase in store, um, we could actually match that barcode um, to the email address of the customer it was originally allocated to. Um, and then we could actually attribute that purchase to that customer, you know, regardless of where they actually shopped. Um, so yes, we finally had you know visibility of our in-store shopper and could go on to you know create that seamless omni-channel experience that we had always dreamed of. So yes, super super excited, super happy um, with this solution. Same. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think it's just been really cool uh, to work so closely with City Beach on such a clever solution and see it have such a positive impact on your results. Uh, you know, we now have an Amarsa solution for clients who want to identify customers in store but have restrictions at point of sale. So we can help to close the loop and identify customers wherever they're shopping. I feel like this is a massive achievement for Team City Beach Amarsa. So very, very proud of that. And the last and final piece uh, we want to talk about is AI, obviously. So proactive marketing. Yeah, so um, obviously the third solution for us um, was being able to layer on AI um, and using its predictive modeling um, to determine a one-to-one -one level of who was most likely to convert, um, likely to churn and likely to remain inactive. Um, so we were actually able to you know, treat everyone as an individual um, instead of grouping everyone in buckets um, and you know we didn't have to create these um, you know reactive segments from scratch and build these crazy long journeys um, to try and cater for as many customers as possible um, we, we were easily able to transition um, from reactive to proactive in uh, a matter of days really um, and plus I got to um, you know I got all that time back to actually focus on more important things like uh, planning my wedding. So <laughs> that was definitely a bonus. <laughs> yes, definitely a bonus. Obviously you want, you don't want to be working on a million node automations. You want to be picking flowers and, and venues. So well done. <laughs> All right. And now we have what that looks like. So visually. Um, yeah, so these are actually some of the campaigns that we ran with AI. Um, so, you know, as you can see, the, the, it includes uh, a unique online and in-store barcode, um, and, as well as the personalised recommendations, um, you know, which is based on the customer's, you know, browsing and purchase behaviour. Um, and we actually include um, personalized recommendations in almost all our emails like now. So um, yeah, that's a that's a you know huge achievement for us.
And more results. Exciting. Yeah, more results. <laughs> um, so the top part, um, as you can see, um, as mentioned, uh, are before our results before um, uh, AI. Um, so again, we saw 37% increase in active customers, $242 added to customer lifetime value, and you know, 4x increase in Facebook with CRM ads. Um, and then the bottom part is um, our results post AI. Um, so after 90 days working with AI, uh, you know, we saw an increase of 18.3% in leads to first time buyers. Uh, we also saw a 5.9% uh, increase in first time to repeat, repeat buyers. 48% um, increase in one back uh, customers from defecting. <clears throat> and we also saw an increase of 3% or 3% higher um, average order value. Um, also on top of this, uh, you know, AI accelerated revenue growth by 250K um, with a split of 60% online and 40% in store, which was, you know, incredible for us. Definitely. I mean, just that incremental increase of, of $250,000 over 90 days is pretty amazing on top of the results you've already yeah. achieved. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, because you guys are so agile and so, you know, wanting to be at the forefront of, of digital marketing and AI and all the great things that we can do, we're really investing in our relationship um, with City Beach. You guys get to go over to Europe once a year, you connect with our product teams to discuss what works for our customers and what's good for City Beach as a business, uh, which also helps our Australian customers. Uh, it strengthens our partnership because we're constantly collaborating and it, it definitely helps you achieve some ama amazing things. So um, partnership that I'm, I'm really proud of. I hope you guys are too. <laughs> uh, yeah, we definitely are. Yeah. <laughs> good. That's what you're supposed to say. Thank you. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, thank you, Laura, for sharing that with us. Um, you know, it's it's. I think it's really important to see the work that goes in um, to to doing things, but you know, also um, what is achievable with pretty small teams um, if if we focus on the right things. So I'm going to talk a little bit about AI now. So why AI? Um, people are really not doing AI because they don't get it. It's complex, it looks big, and you don't know what you can believe because you don't work in tech and we don't all have an AI robotics PhD. So 85% of marketers know AI is going to have a significant impact on the marketing industry in the next five years, but only 37% of organizations are actually investing in it. So AI basically is just changing our approach to marketing. We are going from reactive aggregate solutions, like Laura mentioned, waiting for 90 days till you fall into that bucket to a more proactive one-to-one -one marketing approach. And that's really exciting and does not have to be difficult. So I'll talk a little bit more about how our platform works and how it feeds the AI. So our unified omnichannel customer engagement platform is powered by a fully integrated customer data platform or in MarTech speak, CDP. Um, we accelerate this with actionable industry specific use cases in built into our automation center. It's all driven by channel agnostic customer centric personalization and it's marketer friendly. So it's an easier path to desired business outcomes. So um, to give you an example, I was speaking to a consultant yesterday who works with one of our biggest clients in ANZ, lots of brands, lots of different departments. Um, she's worked with many, many MarTech solutions um, and she'd only just started using a Mar system the last couple of days. And she was actually amazed at how user friendly um, our UI is. So that, that's amazing feedback. We, we live for that kind of feedback. So that was really good. 
So um, we use re re the real-time insights we get to help you determine what areas of your business need improvement and help you identify areas for growth without the need for complex historic reporting, extra BI tools, or additional resources. So through the single uh, actionable dashboard populated with you know, retail specific insights on how other people in your industry are measuring and improving their business, uh, we're now giving you, you know, more insights and customer engagement strategies that are crowdsourced from brands like City Beach uh, to help you grow your business and become a leader in your industry. Um, so we're solving the disconnect between business goals, marketing strategy, execution and customer engagement. So we're delivering omni-channel campaign execution and optimizing marketing budgets with AI to deliver more reach, more consistency, uh, more channels to the right person at the right time uh, with the right incentive. Um, so if you know a customer is going to convert uh, or has a high propensity to purchase, then we don't necessarily want to use our marketing budget on retargeting them. Uh, we might you know, use our low cost digital channels first and save our paid ad spend um, for, for those who aren't as likely to convert. And that's really the power of AI is being able to identify those people who are, who are gonna make a purchase um, and those who need a little bit of extra, extra push. So we're bringing those retail and digital teams together and providing a technology that's easy to use uh, to make better decisions on how to grow your business and talk to your individual customer in a way that suits them. So we've got one platform that executes more for less cost, less resource, less professional services compared to your other big enterprise clouds. So we have more channels, more personalization um, without time expense. Uh, of integration that you would get from, you know, some of those bigger enterprise solutions that take a year to implement. Um, so based on customer references, um, you know, we have people using 10 channels, um, which is about 40% more channels per implementation than any other vendor. So, you know, they're using both the data management and campaign automation within Amarsis, um, and they're all they all seem to be pretty happy with it. So we're helping clients like City Beach deliver the business outcomes they want to achieve and the personalized experiences that their customers deserve. So we'll just take you through a quick summary of what we discussed. Um, in the webinar, and then uh, I think we'll open it up to questions in a little bit. So the problem here uh, was, you know, City Beach's ability to create meaningful one-to-one -one relationships with their customers and scale that, um, and also uh, reducing customer churn. So we need to be able to predict when an individual customer is going to churn, um, and previously that wasn't a possibility. Um, so the solution here is that unified customer data, whatever you want to call it, CDP, unified customer profile, all of the data in one place. That's what we're talking about. So um, the second piece to that was identif identification of customers in store and then AI that helps power that one-to-one -one personalized targeting, right channel, right time. Um, yeah. So the takeaway here, obviously, is, um, you know, we're helping you uh, to, um, you know, enable your marketers to deliver more impactful business results faster. Cool. And then just next step. So I believe your voucher code is here um, on the side. So anyone who wants to go for a shop while you're working from home on your break, maybe. Um, you can have 20% <laughs> off full priced uh, items at City Beach uh, using that code on the right. Um, my email is down here at the bottom of the screen. So if you wanna reach out to me, you can email me directly 
or uh, you can reach out to our marketing manager, Lauren, uh, for to schedule a meeting with someone to talk about how we can help you accelerate your business outcomes. Guys, that was so fantastic. So um, thank you really much for tuning in, everybody. We are. Uh, it's, I think it's a really exciting time to see what the future of AI and e-commerce may look like in 2020, beyond. It's just amazing. We have got quite a few questions from the audience. So without further ado, I will ask some. So we have one from Joshua and he asked, does City Beach keep a CRM connect to the Amasa CDP? Um, yep, I can take that one. Um, so no, we don't. Um, so before actually we, uh, we signed on to a masters and we, uh, connected to, uh, you know, set up the CDP with them. Um, we did have a CRM, um, but the CRM was, uh, you know, all of the data in there was, uh, you know, corrupted. Uh, you know, we had customers who had like six profiles, um, of the same person, um, and yeah, it was, it was, uh, and then we had some data also in our, you know, legacy, um, email, uh, platform as well. So, um, we, that's when we sort of like, uh, you know, discussed with the masters, like, what can we do here? Um, because, you know, this, this isn't working for us. Um, and we need to be able to have, you know, firstly clean data. Um, but also we need, um, you know, clean data going into the platform um, and we need to be able to see that, uh, you know, a single view of the customer instead of, you know, having all these profiles sort of um, all over the place. Um, so to answer your question, no, we do not have a, a CRM plugged into um, the CDP. It's uh, that's the CDP is essentially our, you know, our CRM. Great. And we've got another question from Shannon. So was the barcode on every email sent or selected campaigns? Um, so the barcode, well, the one that you, uh, that was shown on the slides uh, before, um, we, that was actually a, a targeted uh, uh, campaign that we ran. Um, but the next step for us, um, and we're not quite there yet, but the next step for us is to be able to, um, you know, uh, target those, uh, those offers that have already been, um, you know, allocated to the customer and they haven't redeemed it and show it on all of our, um, our BAU emails, so our promotional emails, um, and sort of remarket that to them um, to remind them to use it. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of the next step for us. Um, in terms yeah. of, uh, you know, showing the barcode. We also have other customers who just have a, um, you know, a barcode for each individual customers that they can just present in store and scan and it, we would just identify the customer. It doesn't necessarily need to be tied to a discount. So essentially it could be like, you know, a digital loyalty card, something like that. Yeah, yep, definitely. Alrighty, and we also have one from James and he says, when it comes to CRM strategy, is there a silver bullet or a winning formula that you can use? Um, I suppose, you know, every business uh, you know, is different um, and, you know, they'll, everyone will have different needs. Um, but, you know, our biggest asset um, was our data. So it was really important that once you know, it was clean, um, that we, you know, kept it clean. Um, so, you know, ensuring all the data, all the new data flowing into the platform um, was consistent. Um, and, you know, because you not only want to, uh, you know, maintain the integrity of your data, um, but, you know, you also want to ensure that, you know, it's actually usable um, and actionable. And, you know, and with AI, you want to make sure it's, you know, even predictable as well. So. Um, yeah, that's, I suppose, um, <laughs> uh, winning formula, I suppose you could say, <laughs> is your yeah, data. I would, I would agree. Um, if you, if you put, um, bad stuff in, you're going to get bad stuff out, right? So, um, you need to make sure that you know that what you've got is clean and good and usable, um, so that, you, you know, 
again, it's actionable. Um, and as Laura said, every business is different. You know, we've got cosmetics companies that have a completely different CRM strategy um, to City Beach. But I think the key piece here is just really understanding your customer um, and, and using that good customer data to deliver uh, a personalized customer experience because that is what people want. Yeah, exactly. Fantastic. And we've got one from Zach and he says, how does your customer behavior impact your CRM strategy? Um, oh, sorry, Ali, that cut out just at the last, the last minute. Oh, sorry. Sorry. This one's from Zach and he says, how does your customer behavior impact your CRM strategy? Oh, um, so I suppose, you know, customer behavior, you know, changes all the time. Um, and, you know, an example is actually what's currently happening, um, you know, not only here in Australia, but, you know, the entire world. Um, so, you know, even though uh, AI is doing all the hard work, um, you know, you can't, you know, set and forget it, um, essentially. Um, you know, you still need to, um, you know, monitoring the results and, you know, changing your strategy, um, you know, where you need to. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I agree. People are going to be scared, right? There are some people uh, might be scared uh, to, to go into retail locations. So what we have to start thinking about, you know, we have that great retail data. How do we give those people who shop in retail locations um, and like the retail in-store experience, how do we translate that into an online experience and give them kind of that, that retail experience that they're after? So um, luckily, City Beach has all of that wonderful data sitting in Amarsis. So it's just how we look at it and how we use it um, to deliver digital campaigns and, and, you know, maybe move people to shopping online. Yeah. Fantastic. Now I'm going to ask one more question. It's from another Zach. We've got lots of Zachs here today. Uh, so this one is, how difficult was it to implement the AI? Uh, we've been a bit intimidated by the complexity. Um, look, um, it seems like a huge job, but it honestly is not. Um, AI, you know, what I mentioned before, I was doing literally all of the analyzing and, um, you know, creating segments and trying to capture those customers, um, that, you know, AI could, and I basically couldn't. Um, so, you know, AI, when we brought AI on, it literally did all of the heavy lifting for us. Um, so what happened was I didn't have to create those segments anymore. I didn't have to, you know, delve into the, into the analytics of all the data that we had. Um, all I had to do was, you know, work, you know, I got the opportunity then to actually work more closely um, with our creative team um, and, you know, actually, you know, generate some, you know, really cool and relevant content um, for our customers instead of spending all that time, um, you know, again, trying to um, find the right customer to, to send to. So it's literally, um, you know, I know it can be very in, in, intimidating. I was 100% the same, um, you know, a, a year ago. Um, but, you know, now that I've seen how much time back I get, I've you know, I've got, and the rest of the team as well, um, you know, I, I, I really, you know, recommend it to, um, you know, other businesses um, in terms of that. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I would agree. Like from, from, sorry, from Laura's mm -hmm. side, client side, that's really great feedback for us. I really like hearing that, but from, from an implementation like side of things for us for client success it's kind of just something you just turn on because we all have that we have that information just running in the background so it's like all right well let's turn on the ai boom here's these segments and off we go we just you know make some cool creative and give some people some time back and make more money and i think also sorry just to add on the end there um 
I think also, you know, another thing that's really great about a master's, um, and Kristen, you're going to love this one, <laughs> um, uh, but it's honestly, um, they've built that platform for marketers. You know, you don't actually have to be, you know, a data scientist. I'm not a data scientist um, or, you know, an analyst to, um, you know, get some really great insights. So, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's really easy. There's a strategic dashboard. You can use Smart Insights um, to see, you know, your areas of improvement. Um, and then they've actually built in, um, you know, pre-built tactics in the automation center. Um, so, you know, it just saves so much time now. Um, and it's just so much easier for the marketer to, you know, start actually, um, you know, stepping away from all that time consuming, um, you know, things, tasks, um, and, you know, focus more on your strategic stuff. So, um, yeah. Brilliant. Well, you know what? I wish that we could talk about this all day and we have so many questions coming through, but unfortunately we're actually out of time. So I just wanted to thank you guys so much for actually joining this session. Thank you to our presenters who have just been inundating us with information. I've learned so much more than I thought I would. So that was fantastic. Now, if you did want to re-watch this webinar in your own time, you want to go back later, we will be sending out all attendees a link to the video afterwards. And um, please also contact Kristen and Lara if you have any other information or questions with the emails that were presented before. So thank you very much to Kristen and Lara for their time today. And thank you to everyone who attended the session. We'll see you at the next webinar. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs>